recorded. Hi everyone, this is John Daly. I'm here again with Bernie Goldberg for another episode of the No BS Zone. I was gonna ask you how it's going today, Bernie, but uh, you told me a little bit before we started and I just wanna go ahead and throw it to you. The midterms were uh, last night. We started getting all these results in. What are your thoughts? First, the Republicans can still take control of both houses. They can win the House, not by much, not by not by 30 seats or 50 seats, or by a few seats. And they could win the Senate if they hang on to the lead there they have in Wisconsin, in Nevada, and if they win a runoff in Georgia. And that's all possible. So if they win the Senate, it'll be by one seat. So they could win both houses of Congress. <clears throat> but forgive me for stating the obvious. There was no red wave. There was no bloodbath, as one brilliant observer on Fox predicted. There was no shellacking, as another brilliant observer on Fox predicted. And there's a reason there was no red wave. Abortion was one reason. I'm going to brag. I'm the one who said abortion was going to be a bigger issue while everybody said I was crazy. It was a bigger issue. If Republican candidates want to hold on to their purity that, about the sanctity of life, about how you can't make exceptions for the, for the life of the mother or for rape or incest, hang on to your morality, hang on to your purity, but you're going to wind up losing elections going forward. Okay, there's a real political world and the real political world says that kind of extreme position doesn't work. So that's, that, that, that's one reason. Abortion was a bigger issue than most so-called experts believed. Another reason, people just don't like Republicans. Millions and millions of Americans don't like and don't trust Republicans, which leads me to the biggest single reason. They don't like Republicans. And the biggest single reason, there was no red wave. Donald J. freaking Trump. That's what he picked candidates that didn't win in Arizona. As we speak, it's not official yet. I'm telling you, Democrats are going to hold on to the seat in Arizona. He picked Emmett Oz, who was a good candidate, actually, but he didn't win because he was seen as an outsider. You shake your head. He was an OK candidate. How about that? That's fine. He's, he, he was from New Jersey. That that didn't help if, when you're that, running in Pennsylvania. At all, <laughs> and Donald Trump should have realized that. He picked Herschel Walker, who may wind up winning the race. I want to make that very clear. But if he wasn't the candidate and a more moderate, reasonable, competent Republican were the candidate, there'd be no runoff. So Donald Trump, this is my final thing I'm going to say in, in this segment. Donald Trump lost the House in 2018. He lost the White House in 2020. He lost the Senate in 2021, in January of 2021. And now this. And, and some of you who still hang on to Donald Trump, not that you held your nose and voted for him because he was better than Hillary Clinton, which I understand, or better than Joe Biden, which I understand, but you still think that he's the Messiah. As long as Donald Trump is around, as long as he has influence in the Republican Party, Republicans are going to be hanging on by a thread, by their fingernails, to win elections. Donald Trump, I will repeat what I've said before, is the worst thing that has ever, ever happened to the Republican Party. No, I, it, it's, it's funny because I... I, I should confess something. So uh, earlier in the day yesterday, I was working on my notes for today's episode. And I, of course, did so under the assumption that the, uh, the GOP was going to have a pretty big night and I was going to cover a bunch of points that aligned with that assumption. Yeah, and things, things went in a completely different direction. And um, I think for the reasons that you state. And at uh, one point, though, I think that's it's going to be a big story coming out of this, too, is just how bad the polls were. I mean, the polls were, were, were suggesting this big red wave. Um, you know, back in 2016, I was I was defending the poll numbers because they were a lot more accurate than people were giving them uh, trouble for. 
But yeah, we're having some serious issues right now. Um, and uh, I almost wonder if the polling industry is just gonna tank after this. Well, this is what this is what's fascinating. We had the worst inflation in what, 40 years? We had a surge in crime that everybody was upset about. Oh, crime is gonna be the big issue, right? If inflation and crime are the two biggest issues. We had the border and we had Joe Biden's unpopularity. But you know who was more unpopular than Joe Biden? Donald Trump. So all the things that should have logically resulted in a red wave didn't because something trumped, no pun intended, something trumped inflation, crime, the mess on the southern border, what they're teaching kids in public school, right track, wrong, wrong track, something trumped all of that. And as I say, it was abortion. You know what I left out earlier? It was also January 6th. People really were concerned. Republicans weren't as forceful against January 6th. They said, oh, what happened there was wrong, but what happened in Portland was also wrong. Regular normal people, not Fox experts, who even today are hesitant to blame Donald Trump for what happened. Normal regular people went to the polls and said, yeah, inflation is bad. Yeah, crime is bad. Yeah, the southern border is bad. And yeah, I'm not, I don't like Joe Biden, but something else was more important than all of that. If Republicans don't consider that question and think about that answer impassionately, without passion, is I don't even know if impassionately is a word, but without passion, they are going to be in big trouble going forward. No, I agree. And it's it's not just, you know, I thought one of the big advantages, well, there were several big advantages for the Republicans going into this. You listed a lot of them, all the, the problems that people have with the country not right now. Um, I thought, you know, Trump not being on the ballot himself was actually going to be a big asset. But as it turns out, you know, it's a, a, the, one of the big problems um, is that he he not he endorsed a lot of really bad uh, candidates uh, who got their nominations over people who would have done much better in a general election matchup with the Democrats. You know, the one that keeps sticking up for me is Peter Meyer in, in Michigan. Um, he would have won that race and, uh, you know, it didn't happen. And I think the same is true. Like you said, a lot of uh, these people that even J.D. Vance, you know, he ended up pulling it out, but it was quite close. And you look at all the other Republicans that were on the state ballot in Ohio and they were winning by double digits. I mean, he was he, he made it a nail biter and, and it worked out with him. But with all these other people, um, it really did make a difference in the end. It made a huge difference. Um, it made a decisive difference. And Trump was out today or last night, I'm not sure which, saying that the reason the Colorado candidate, Republican, lost is because he wouldn't say the election was stolen. And the reason Bulldog, a, a total despicable candidate in New Hampshire, the reason he lost is because, well, yes, he said the candidate, the election was stolen in the beginning. But then when he went to the general election, he said, no, Biden won the election. And, and Trump is now saying that's why he lost. So this leads us to the next question, which is Donald Trump is still blaming candidates for losing and not himself. And next week, he's supposed to have an announcement. If he has an ounce of decency, which he doesn't, if he has an ounce of self-awareness, which he doesn't, if he cares one damn bit about the future of the Republican Party, which he doesn't, he will either not make any announcement or will announce that he is not running for president of the United States. If he runs for president of the United States, here we go again. You're gonna have the moderate voters who would like to vote for Republicans because they do think the border is out of control. They do think crime is out of control. They do think inflation is out of control. And they do blame Democrats for all of that. 
they would like to vote for Republicans. But if Donald Trump comes along and starts calling any opponents who, who have the guts to run against him, we can get to that in a minute also. If Donald Trump comes along and, and runs, the independents will do what they did in 2020. They will vote for a Democrat, even a weak Democrat like Joe Biden, before they vote for Donald Trump. The worst thing that ever happened to the Republican Party, and I'm, I'm including Herbert Hoover, whose policies led to the Great Depression in that category. Yeah, no, someone I saw, I saw suggest that uh, if, if Trump was clever, he would change his announcement to uh, on the 15th to him coming back to Twitter or something like that instead of instead of running for president. Although that would be a, a bad thing for the GOP, too, if he's back on Twitter. You know, the question now is, and I'm interested in your thinking on this, John, the question now is, are any other Republicans, I say other Republicans, Donald Trump's not a Republican. Let, let's get that straight. He ran as a Republican. If he thought he could have run as a Democrat uh, and, and beat Hillary Clinton for the nomination, he would have run as a Democrat. Donald Trump is a Donald Trump. He has no allegiance to anybody or anything other than Donald Trump. My question is, if he decides to run, will other Republicans have the guts to stand up and say, enough? We're looking forward, we're not looking back enough. We are going to run against Donald Trump and take our chances. Or will they say, this is not a good year to run against Donald Trump. If he runs and wins or loses, he's finished. That said, he's not gonna run, well, he might run again, even if he loses. But if he wins, he can't run again. I'll wait four years. I hope that is not the case. I hope DeSantis, I hope the other candidates who I don't think are as gutsy as DeSantis, I hope they say we're running and make this a race. And then the question becomes, what will all those Republicans who at least as of the day before the midterms said, we still love Donald Trump, we still want him to run, what will they say after the midterms? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna dance around that question a little bit, and because it is sort of a good lead into what I was I was gonna bring up next, um, and I will get to, I will get to that answer. But there, what's worth noting about this is that there were actually some big Republican winners last night, and they included in places like Georgia and Florida, uh, Brian Kemp, uh, who some have kind of suggested maybe would be a good would be presidential material. Um, he, he impressively won over Stacey Abrams. And of course, as you mentioned, Florida Governor uh, Ron DeSantis won by a huge margin, huge margin over Charlie Crist. And everyone, you know, has been talking about DeSantis, uh, you know, as a presidential candidate. And it seems to me that such a big victory would would help make a, a strong case for that. Um, if both he and Trump won, um, it seems to me, and I, I don't know if he's willing to do it, that's just it. You know, he could play that card where he points to, you know, you know, I have these these qualities that Trump has that a lot of you like, but I know how to win elections and Trump does not. He got beat by Joe Biden. He lost a bunch of seats for us since 2016. If he says that, you know, that's that's a very, I think to me, a very effective argument. But at the same time, he risks offending all of these, you know, heavy duty Trump supporters who he will need to win the primary. That is precisely the problem. Trump's most loyal base, I'm not talking about people who voted for him, I'm talking about the niche, the most loyal base, the part of the Republican Party that literally, I want to make this very clear, I know the difference between the word literally and figuratively, I'm saying literally would still vote for Donald Trump if he shot somebody on Fifth Avenue, as he once proclaimed, literally would still vote for him. They, if Donald Trump turns them against DeSantis or Kemp or Yunkin in Virginia, who also won big in against uh, an incumbent Democrat in, in Virginia. Uh, if he turns that 20%, let's say, well, then Republicans can't win, can they? If he tells them to sit home, if he tells them that, that they're rhinos, 
if he calls them to sanctimonious and whatever he calls Kemp and whatever he calls Yunkin and whatever he calls Chris Christie, who's a, who is way out in front saying we have to look forward, not backwards. If Trump goes against these people in the vindictive, nasty, malicious, sick way that he goes against anybody he perceives as an enemy, then Republicans are going to have a tough, a tough chance winning. They are. I think that's true. And one thing sort of keeping on the theme of uh, 2024, um, I saw some people suggest, you know, once it became clear that the, uh, the Democrats were doing much better than expected last night, that this actually makes it more likely that Joe Biden will try to run again. I think I don't know if that's true, but I think that would be a terrible mistake either way. I mean, it's not as if you know Biden's Biden's approval ratings I think are genuinely low. You know, I have a little bit less faith in the polls than I did before, but I'm still fairly confident that he's unpopular as a president, and, and so I would have some serious trouble thinking that that would be a smart strategy on the part of the Democrats. Well, consider this: at the earliest years of our Republic. There were no uh, TVs, no radios, no Facebook, no Twitter, no TikTok, no Instagram. And the electorate managed to elect George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. Now, with all the information in the world at our fingertips, 24 hour a day information, you can make decisions intelligently based on all the information you want from all the sources you want. We get Joe Biden and Donald Trump. If I had a gun right now, I'd shoot myself. This is an evolution, this is de evolution. This is insanity that we've come from Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, and Adams in Washington to Trump and Biden. One of them is, well, they're both incompetent, but one of them is mentally not fit to be in office because he's lost more than a step. And the other is such a narcissist, such a psychopath. Well sociopath would be the correct medical description. I take the psychopath back, sociopath. This is what we've got after 250 years of evolution? No, no, no. We've gone backwards, not forwards. Yeah, and it's it's really, it, it's hard to, to- I'm tempted to shut off my camera, drop the mic and say, I am the hell out of here because I am so disgusted today. I am so disgusted with what happened yesterday thank, because of Donald Trump. I am so disgusted with what passes for serious commentary on cable news. I am so disgusted. And, and you know what? I appreciate everybody watching, but those of you who still swear by Donald Trump, I'm disgusted with you too. You can be disgusted with me. Let, let's make it a, a swap. You're disgusted with me. I'm disgusted with you. because. Of all of the things I mentioned, the unserious commentary on Fox, Donald Trump's ego, ego, maniac personality, Trump supporters who stay with him no matter what, that's why there wasn't a red wave. That's oh, what happens great. when you don't tell the people what's really going on. And what's really going on is if you support Donald Trump, if you support the candidates that he picked, you're going to lose elections. Now, maybe this is a good thing. Have we thought of that? Maybe this is a good thing that now maybe the cowardly Republicans who are afraid to say, speak the truth about Donald Trump, maybe they'll say, well, that guy Masters lost. I know it's not official yet, but he lost in uh, Arizona. Oz lost in Pennsylvania. Herschel Walker's gonna have to go to a runoff and pray to God 
that he that he wins the runoff. Harry Lake may lose the governorship in Arizona. You know, maybe right. we should drop this guy like a bad habit. Well, you, you bring up a point about if, that. If the, if, the, if the election teaches people that, that's a good thing. Right. And I think you you bring up a important point about the runoff, which I think we are headed toward. Um, if if Trump follows through on November 5th, 15th and does announce that he's running for president, I can't imagine that having a great effect on the runoff because that'll be the, a month later uh, with Herschel Walker when Trump's back in the news and he's out there saying everything. And it kind of goes back to the same issue that we had two years ago, which is why the, the GOP doesn't have the Senate right now. Bing, go. Exactly. Yeah, that, and, you people and, and I, oh, let me let me refresh people's memories who are still kissing Donald Trump's rear end. The reason the Senate is controlled by Democrats is because in red state Georgia, two not liberals, two progressives won because Donald Trump went down there in January and said, "You know, I really won the presidency. The election in Georgia was rigged." And enough of his stupid ass supporters sat home on election day because they said, you know what? If the election is rigged, why am I going to vote? And that's what will happen again if he announces his candidacy. And, and it's, it's, it's super tight between Warnock and Herschel Walker. And people might say, oh, yeah, Donald Trump is at it again. I don't know. But the best yeah. thing that can happen for the Republican Party, and I'll take up a collection, <laughs> that we send Donald Trump to Tim Buck freaking two and stay there, I'd say forever, but at least until after 2024. Right. And for the people that, you know, are going to be, there'll be people watching this and the membership who will be complaining, oh, these guys, all they ever do is talk about Trump. I, I mentioned that I'd put these notes together last night. I actually had very little that I was planning on talking about Donald Trump today. I, I thought things were going to go different. I thought he was going to, in the end, be sort of a non-factor in the, in the grand scheme of things in a particular election. And yeah, he, the, Trump proved us wrong. I mean, I, did, I didn't want to talk about <laughs> that much today, but we have to. I mean, that's he is a big part of the story. You and me both. If I showed you my notes from yesterday, you'd think I was an idiot. I had, well, here's why the Republic, here's why the red wave happened. Here's why Trump has a lot of juice now because his candidates won in this state and that state and the other state. Here's why Trump drew, you know, I mean, here's why the Republicans were successful in all of, none of it happened. Everything yeah. I was planning to talk about didn't happen. The only time I was going to mention Donald Trump is that despite what people think of him, meaning me and you, he was immensely successful on Election Day and we got to take him seriously. Well, that didn't happen. Don't blame me for mentioning Donald Trump. I'm just, you know, you know, literally don't blame me for mentioning Donald Trump because in other places you'll get the BS that people say. Oh, I know what they want to hear. I know, I know what's good for business. Kiss, kiss, kiss the audience's ass and you'll get more business. Sorry, I can't do that. I won't do that. If I have to close down the website before I do that, I'll do that. But I mean, I'm serious about that. But I understand. I had no intention of talking badly about Donald Trump today. I had I'm talking about what a good day this was for Republicans and what that means looking into the future. Sorry, yeah. I didn't lose the elections. I didn't lose, I didn't subvert the red wave. That wasn't my fault. That was Donald Trump's fault. And I, and I don't, you know, I, I see some, I've been looking, I've been listening to some, you know, Republican and conservative right-wing commentators um, last night and this morning. And people who weren't as willing before to uh, to call out Trump are, are doing it now. But honestly, I just I just I don't have any reason to expect it to last. I mean, it's 
you know, I, I've made the point a number of times that, that Republicans had this golden, golden opportunity to finally kick Trump to the curb after January 6th and that happened. And they, like, you know, um, Liz Cheney likes to use the, the word rehabilitate for what the Republicans did to him. And there, there's some truth to that. I mean, they could have, it would have been hard, you know, the, the, he's, he's very big with the base, um, the Republicans uniting together and condemning him, um, you know, finding him guilty if, if it took that. But it's, it's, it could have been done. It would have been a short-term loss, I think. I don't think it would have been a long-term loss for the Republicans at all. They could have started on that road to healing uh, back in, 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 in early 2021. And um, they chose not to. And they're, you know, it, Trump's not going to go away on his own. If, if they're going to get a handle back on their party, they need to stand up to him. And it just, it's not, it hasn't happened. And I don't have a lot of faith even now that it's going to happen. Show you how, how little I know. Back when he was running, I said, confidently, I said, he just called John McCain. He, he just demeaned John McCain. Whatever you think of John McCain's politics, John McCain served five years in a North Vietnamese prison camp, okay? He could have gotten out. They were willing to let him out early. And, and by the way, he's tortured. His arm was never right after that. And he said, I'm not going unless you, all my men that are being held here go with me. Now, that, that's, that's something we should be proud of. And Donald Trump badmouthed Donald, uh, Donald Trump badmouthed John McCain. And I, stupid Bernie Goldberg, said, he is done. He just crossed the bridge he, he should have never crossed. He is finished. That was before he won the nomination. So kicking him to the curb, they should have kicked him to the curb in 2015. He's yeah. toxic. He's toxic. I'm done talking about him. I'm done talking. Goodbye. The end. I am so disgusted. The end. <laughs> Well, that sounds like a good place to end things, Bernie. I'll let you, uh, really? Uh, really? you have, a, have a miserable uh, afternoon <laughs> here thinking about the midterms more. Why do you think that's a good place to end things? <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's it's there's not everything there is to be said <laughs> has been said on, on, on what happened with the midterms, unfortunately. Just one more thing. If you don't tell your friends to sign up, I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I, I want to talk to more of you. I appreciate every last one of you. I mean that even the even the ones who think I'm crazy about what I'm saying about Donald Trump. I do appreciate every last one of you, but you got to tell your friends. I want to talk to a much bigger crowd. Absolutely, absolutely. And people watching this video, if they scroll down, they'll be able to see a couple buttons to uh, be able to let their friends know, gift uh, a membership to their friends, uh, lots of different options. So, all right, Bernie, well, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for joining me today. And I wanna thank everybody else for tuning in. Um, try to have a, try to have a, as best of a day as you can with everything that's going on. All right. If you're a liberal, you will. If you're a conservative, think about what happened. Bye-bye, John. <laughs>